All right then gang, so now we know how PHP files are being run on the server and how we're serving up these pages to the browser using the local development server. What I'd like to do now is create a folder inside htdocs where we're gonna contain all of our different course files for this project or this series. So I'm gonna go into XAMPP, then into htdocs and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder Tuts tutorials, right? So now every time we create some code, I'm going to place it inside this Tuts folder. And when we preview this in a browser, we're going to go to forward slash Tuts over here. Okay. So then now we have that folder set up. Let's go to Sublime Editor and I've opened this folder already inside Sublime as well. And what I'm going to do is create our first PHP file. So I'm going to right click, go to new file, and I'm going to control S to save this and we're already in the Tuts folder, so I'm just gonna call this index.php. So our PHP files are gonna have this .php extension. Now, if we wanna to start to write PHP code inside here, it's not enough to call this .php. We also have to embed our PHP code inside PHP tags. A bit like when you create HTML, you create HTML tags, we have PHP tags for PHP code as well. So to do that, you do an open bracket, question mark, PHP, and then when we come to close the PHP tag, it's question mark, close bracket. Now in Sublime, there's a shortcut, I can just type PHP and then tab, and then it does it for me. So now what we could do is write some PHP code inside this tag right here. Now we could keep it all on one line and we could do a PHP statement right here, or if you're writing multiple lines of PHP, you'll find that people just enter down a couple of lines and write the PHP inside the tags like that. Either way is fine. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a very simple PHP statement. So I'm gonna use a statement called echo, and then I'm gonna say a string after the echo statement. Now a string is just like a sentence or a collection of letters and numbers and symbols inside quotation marks. And we'll learn more about strings later on. So I'm just gonna say something like, hello, oops, if I can spell it correctly, that is, hello ninjas, okay? Now, important, at the end of every PHP statement, you need to do a semicolon. If you don't add that on, then it's gonna error, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so let me save this now, and let me run this inside the browser. So if I go to the browser, and I go to forward slash tuts, which was the folder we created. Remember, inside here, we've just created an index.php file. We don't need to write index.php because when we do forward slash tuts into the folder, it's gonna automatically look for that index.php file or an index.html file if it exists. So if I click enter, it's gonna find that file, run it, and we can see this now, this hello ninjas, okay? So that is what this echo statement did for us right here. It takes this string and it essentially echoes it to the browser. But what's actually going on here behind the scenes? If we look over here and we right click and inspect, then we can see, if I just zoom this in, that this is actually an HTML page, right? Now, we requested a PHP page, it was index.php, and we're getting an HTML page back and Hello Ninjas is being output into the body. So what's going on? Well, what's happening is we're requesting the index.php page. That is going to the server, finding that page, and it's running the code inside the PHP. Okay, so inside here. So it's running that, and that is outputting a string. Now, it takes that string, this thing right here, hello ninjas, and it sends it to the browser. And when it reaches the browser, the browser interprets that string as HTML, and it puts it inside this HTML document because a browser can't actually run a PHP file. It knows HTML. So it's rendering whatever is returned from the PHP inside an HTML document, okay? So that's what's going on right there. Now, I wanna show you what happens if we don't add on this semicolon. If we don't do that, and we try to run this again by refreshing, it still works, but if we then try to echo something else after it, hello again, then this is not gonna work. So refresh that, and now we get a parse error, syntax error, unexpected echo, expecting a comma or a semicolon. So we have to add on our semicolons at the end to say, look, this is the end of this particular statement. Then it can go on to the next one and this will work. So if I save this now and refresh in the browser, then we see this again, okay? Cool. All right then, so 
let me just delete that second one. And in fact, I'm gonna comment this out as well. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about is how to actually embed this PHP stuff inside HTML code. So what I could do is I could type my HTML tags, I'm gonna press tab and that's gonna create this little boilerplate for me. I could create this HTML template inside this PHP file. And inside this HTML template, I could do some PHP tags. So for example, I could, first of all, let's give this a title. I'll just say my first PHP file. And then below that in the body, I'm gonna do an H1. Now inside the H1, I could say, hello ninjas, but instead I'm gonna use PHP to echo this, okay? So if I do PHP tab to create the tags and then say echo and the string I want to echo, which is hello ninjas, okay? And then semicolon. Now what's gonna happen here? We're gonna request this file in the browser. It's gonna to go to the server and it's gonna run this PHP file. Wherever it sees any PHP like this, it's gonna process that PHP. And this is gonna result in just this Hello Ninjas text being output in this position. So it would be the same as this. That's what it would result in, okay? So we're running that PHP. It's resulting in that text being embedded between these H1 tags. And then it's taking the resulting HTML and it's sending that to the browser. The browser receives that, interprets it as an HTML file and renders this, the resulting HTML template to the DOM. So if we save this now and preview this again, refresh, then we can see that right here and it's bigger because it's inside an H1 now. So that's really cool. That's how we can easily embed our PHP inside our HTML templates. So this is another reason PHP has been so popular over the years, the fact that we can easily mix our HTML and PHP together to return this dynamic HTML template to the browser. Now, this might seem pointless at the minute because we could have easily just hard-coded Hello Ninjas instead of the PHP tags, and it would have given us the same result. But imagine if the stuff that we're outputting here inside the PHP tags it wasn't just hard-coded strings, but instead it could be dynamic data such as user information on a user dashboard or maybe product information from a database. That's ultimately the goal here, to output dynamic content to the HTML templates and perform some kind of manipulation of them, okay? So now we know how to create these PHP files and now we know how to embed our PHP inside the HTML itself. In the next video, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about two things called variables and constants.